Hey guys, I'm Kendall Long, and this is Down to Date, where we bring two strangers into the podcast studio to see if they are down to date. You and I are both going to be acting like a fly on the wall or a third wheel and see different games, different activities to see if this couple is really a match made in podcast heaven. So without further ado, we're going to bring both of our contestants in. Today we have Eric and Diana to see if they are down to date. All right, we have Diana and Eric in the studio. Diana. Like Princess Diana? Like Princess Diana. Princess oh, Diana. Okay. Literally. 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 I love that. was named after her. Diana was okay. just saying she was a little bit nervous. How are you feeling about being on this blind date? I'm always nervous, you know? It's new people, new energy, but nervous means excitement. Like, enthused. Like, let's go. We have the energy. Have you ever been on a blind date before, Eric? Never have I ever. Really? I didn't, people didn't set me up on dates, but nothing like blind. Like, I yeah. knew of the person. Like, yeah, go to the Instagram. Check them out. Like... This is just yeah. really blind. Well, how are you doing? Yeah, I mean, now it's hard to blind date because you just yeah. go on Instagram and oh, then, like, yeah. see who they are Push and then find IG. out everything about them. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. This is true. Instagram is kind of like the uh, resume, the resume for dating. Yeah. Right? But some people don't look the same offline. No, that's true. <laughs> you know? Well, that's, I feel like that's how certain online dating, like Bumble or, you know, Match or all that yeah. stuff, it's like... You know, you ha- and you have a conversation via text is way different than you have it in real talking. life. In yeah. real life. Yeah. So, real life. 100%. Intimate. We are bringing it in the podcast face to face, making it real. Are you guys ready? Yeah. I'm ready. It. All yeah. right. So, the first thing we're going to be doing is called story time. So, you guys are going to be okay. telling your life story in one minute in as much detail as possible. So, who's brave enough to go first? Who do wow. I see? Ladies you go first. first in my life. <laughs> Good girl. No, ladies I'll do always it. first. Diana, Diana, I okay. have to agree, Eric. Ladies first. Ladies okay, first. I'll do so it. Where are you going? So, can we get a minute countdown? All right. So, you're going to be doing your life story in one minute with as much detail as possible. Are you ready? Okay, as much detail as possible. Much detail as Noted. possible. All right, Noted. Mark, get set, go. Okay, so I was born in Pasadena, California at Huntington. Hospital, yeah, Huntington Hospital. Um, li- my family lived in Pasadena for like maybe a couple of years after I was born. Then we moved to Mexico, lived there till I was like five, moved back to LA, moved to South LA, lived there for most of my life. Went to element two elementary schools there. Went to middle school. Middle school was nuts. I went to, I think, the second biggest public middle school in the U.S., wow. and it was literally crazier than college. <laughs> and then I went to high school in the area. High school, I was like a theater nerd. Um, theater nerd, super involved with like student government. I was like class president for four years, um, played basketball. Okay. Um, then went to college. Moved away, um, was in college for like I would say four to five oh. years. My f- minute has oh that my goodness, so, like just Guys, nothing. We got to nothing. <laughs> that was nothing. Details, that, that was a lot of people. detail. We got to college, guys. Yeah. In one minute, we got to college. Jesus. <laughs> Good there's job. so much more. Do I feel like there's like so you much know more. Everything about me now? I know enough. Jesus, Pasadena, <laughs> South LA. I feel like there's was so nuts. much that I'm missing though. Like. Family members, yes. pets, yes. Oh, yeah. first yeah. love. Like, there's so yeah. many details One minute that is I'm not missing. enough. All one right. minute is not enough. One minute is not enough. Is there anything you feel like you wish you could have said in that one minute? My family. Family. I have a giant family. family. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I have a sister. No, I have two sisters, three sisters. Okay. One brother and my parents. Got it. And a huge extended family. Oh, nice. I love huge families. Yeah. yeah, it's so much fun, See, honestly. My boyfriend has a huge family, too. It's like a big Italian family. And mm-hmm. like literally, I feel like I've met like so many cousins, and I still haven't met all the cousins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cousin Johnny, Cousin Rich. And, and then like nieces and the nephews, and it goes on forever. Yeah. It goes on. The tree, yeah. the family tree is the extensive. That's awesome. The family tree. Yeah. Good all job. Right, amazing. How do you feel? Do you feel like you can get your whole entire life story in one minute? I don't know. I know my starting point. I don't know my ending point. You, it's good. Just go for Just it. You know, reach for, for the it. stars. You have one minute. Are you ready? Ready as ever can be. Right? Ready like Freddy. <laughs> Your mark. Get set. Go. Okay. So I was born March 9th uh, at 9.09 p.m. I came a month early because I was due April 7th. So it was premature. I had a twin. Didn't make it. She was going to be a girl. So I feel like that energy lives within me. And at John Hawkins 
a memorial hospital, I think, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, mom name is Karen. So I'm a junior. My dad is Eric. Uh, Baltimore City was a tough city. Went to Mount Rural Elementary and Middle School. Now, middle school, I won middle school basketball championship. And I was a team captain. Basketball, my favorite sport. Uh, three sisters, one younger brother, one younger sister, two older sisters. I'm the middle child. I balance everything out. I was pretty much the captain on softball, basketball, football. I played Pop Warner, 11-14. Uh, I just grew up, wanted to play basketball. Basketball was my dream. Went to junior college, played two years of junior college ball. And then I went to Hampton and went four year. I graduated in 2010 and then I moved to LA. That's hey, it. Hey, That's hey, it. All hey, right. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. We got to college. Hey, 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 you guys hey, both hey, got hey, to hey, college. Hey, you guys. Hey, I tried to give you a little bit of details. Then I got lost <laughs> like, in the sauce. Like, I was damn. like, is he going to give us his natal chart description? Shit. and everything? Damn, I'm a Pisces. March 9th. I'm a That's rising Libra. Okay, do you feel like there's anything that you missed within that one minute? Um... Um, my family is my inspiration. Uh, growing up, it wasn't bad. It was different. So it was a lot of struggles that I saw around me and within my family that I wanted to change. And so I think now in life, I have the possibility to do those things, especially for my nephews. I didn't get to say I got two nephews. One birthday is tomorrow. And then I have a niece. So three nephews, one niece. So I get to build the narrative for the guys and the young ladies moving forward in a different way. Yeah. I love that. I absolutely yeah. love that. Family. Man, and you guys also had a lot that was in common, actually, in that one minute. Yeah, you yeah. got three sisters, Basketball. right? Yeah, I have three sisters. Yeah. Yes. Did you figure that out? Did I say that on the brother. questionnaire? I know. <laughs> this is what I do, guys. I find out who whose siblings are what, and I match oh. people based on their siblings. Based on families. <laughs> when is your birthday? February 17th. Oh. So I'm an Aquarius. Oh, you're right on the cusp. Yeah. Uh, moon Capricorn, is that? Is that correct? Sun, Aquarius. Moon, I know nothing Capricorn. about astrology. What's your rising? I... Do you know your rising sign? You ascend it? Uh, I don't know. It's all right. We'll figure it out. I feel we'll like figure we can out. really get in depth and talk about all of the moon signs. You know, I feel like I'm that's hey, really I'm into it. it. Grade, so. <laughs> I'm really into it. All right. Well, now that we got the surface level stuff out of the way, yeah. we're about to talk about some uncomfortable stuff. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, oh, no. We're starting it already. Okay. So this oh, is God. just the beginning of the date, and we are bringing up the jar of questions you never want to ask on a first date. Mm. You guys ready? Why not? <laughs> what questions so, don't you want to I ask? Know. I might want to ask everything. Well, with this jar, I have it full of questions that you probably would never want to bring up on a first date, such as sex, marriage, you know, politics, all that stuff you never Let's want to bring talk up. talk about it. I mean, is there anything that you guys are afraid to bring up, Eric? Anything you're afraid to bring up on a first date? No, I don't want to talk about it all. Bravery. I like the bravery. I'm curious. Yeah. Because then it's like, Let's get the elephant out the room if it's a thing. Yeah. But if we don't know and we don't talk about it, we'll never know. This is true. Diana, yeah, and it's anything? Better, yeah, it's better to just talk about it on the first date so that Crucial it doesn't come up later and it's yes. like awkward. Two or brave like... souls. Two brave souls. All right, Eric, because Diana went first with the story, you're going to be going first with the jar. Pick the first question. <sighs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. This is kind of deep and intimate. Oh. <laughs> so, Diana. Oh, God. Princess Diana. <laughs> eye contact, so body worried. language, energy, right? No. But what do you think about me so far? Ooh. Ooh. Jump around, please. Right oh, my God. I'm going to close my ears. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm too afraid to know. That's true. Um, I think you're funny. Oh, you have really? jokes, yeah. Mm. High energy, mm, 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 so you mm. must be somebody fun to hang out with. Um, and smart. Oh, really? Yeah. There smart. Go. Yeah. Go stroke my ego. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Damn. <laughs> All right, now it's your turn. No, I'm asking you no? the same question. Oh yeah, about you. You have the same. Oh, oh she don't you... pick. She don't get to pick. You it's both not a have different... to. You both have to answer these questions. Oh. Yeah. That's simple. Yeah. Simple, yeah. Simple, it's simple, a fair simple. game. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like you're very uh, peaceful, very relaxed. You know who you are. I like that. You're beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're Aquarius, so we can really have deep <laughs> convos. And I like your nails. Oh, thank you. Nails. I just got them done. Yeah, I like them. Ooh, and, and it um, goes, yeah. my, she's wearing, If you, for those of you who are listening, um, beautiful black outfit with the bright orange or peach nails. Yeah, so maybe it's like Halloween, peach. It's you a know? good combo. It's a good combo. I, I like, like it. it. I it like pops. It. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right, we're going to go for another question. Believe that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. Hamburger. Oh, this one's short. Wow, this one's funny. <laughs> how much do you weigh? Ooh, oh, how much do you weigh, guys? I think I didn't gain some weight <laughs> over holiday weekend, guys. Right. I feel like this is a question that you never, ever want to ask a lady, ever. I know. <laughs> yeah, we got to get to that because I want to know why. But we'll talk yeah. about it. Okay. okay. She can't guess? Or she really want to know? Oh, I mean, you can, can guess. Take a guess. Right here. You look like about... Mm, Maybe mm, like... Mm, 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 mm. Flex game two, going strong. 200? Ooh! <laughs> girl, you're scratching the surface! <laughs> oh. She I'm is a like 197.6. Wait, really? Point six. So, I had a charity game that I played in a few days ago. So, you know, I was sprinting and running mm. some laps and doing some cars. So, I'm in between... 196, 97, and 200. I'm Wait, like in you between. weighed yourself though? Do you weigh yourself? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? I'm a trainer by trade as well. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And it's all about how I feel. I lift a lot of weight, so that puts on extra mm -hmm. mass. But last time I weighed myself, I was 197. Okay. okay. So you were close. So I'm between 197 and 200. Give her the point. Oh, points. my God, I'm so good. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. All right. Eric, are you gonna guess? No, can you guess? Please guess. Guess my weight. Like I'm gonna be. Like... I'm gonna be so offended though. Um. Okay. You're a trainer, so you you know. This is weight. true, and you um, probably weigh people. I would say one seventeen. I think that's about close. That's I honestly nice. don't weigh myself. Yeah. See, so, I don't weigh myself either. I feel ever? like it's a psychological thing of yeah. like sometimes if I go to a gym or if my friend has a scale, I'll weigh myself and be like, oh, cool. That's yeah. good to know. But other than that, I really. Yeah. I think the last time I weighed myself was, I don't know, like last year or something. Really? Yeah. I like never weigh myself. I kind of just like. So what's the theory feel on out, that? And women are weighing body. themselves. But. I don't think I'm 117 anymore. <laughs> okay, you I have think to say so? That. It's, 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 it's no, less or more? I, I think I'm, I'm more about, than 117. I think I'm more like 122 because I well, used I, to... I don't... I can't... You didn't stand up, so I don't oh, really know. Oh, here we go. Standing no, up. Doing saying. a spin. Oh, Diana's oh, doing a spin. Oh, oh, hey. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, you probably have heels on, right? Yeah. 117 yeah. is fair for your body yeah, type. Yeah, but, I mean... I weighed myself a long time ago, and it was 117, and I know I've gained weight since because I've so maybe, been because my four workout or five regime has more, changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah, or take, give or take. Yeah. All right, yeah. I think we're gonna go for another question. <clears throat> Let's okay, do I pick? All right, up? Dana's gonna go. Okay. Do 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 do. Oh, okay. Have you ever peer pressured anyone? Ooh, peer pressure. Mm. Ooh. I don't think so. I've been such a leader my whole life. I inspired people and motivated them, but not maybe challenge someone like to do more than they're doing, but not like, yeah. man, you should do this. Now, I've been peer pressured oh, before, yeah. but I don't think I was never that tight yeah. to push someone to do something they shouldn't do. You were the good, the good guy. Yeah, I was more of, I'm the leader. I'm motivating you to do great. So I might challenge you. It's like, well, if you could do 12 push ups, you can do 15. You know? So you're yeah. a trainer, so you're used yeah, to motivating. So but peer pressure, I say, would fall along the lines of like drinking, drugs, sex, drugs. drinking. Oh, yeah, I've never okay. done drugs a day in my life. But maybe you can way. peer pressure in someone into doing maybe bungee jumping. I've bungee done jumping. that. Bungee jumping, there you go. I've done that. Oh, I peer see, pressure my friends I'm afraid of heights, into so. jumping off a bridge. Yeah. I said, if your friend jumps off a bridge, <laughs> Classic well, you do life. it too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So I did yeah. that. I okay. never peer pressured people into doing drugs or drinking no, or things yeah. like that. I'm so against just that. an adventure. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, but in, in things, yeah, when it comes to like fun things, facing or, like, your fears, facing your fears, mm -hmm. or going out with me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and then I, I peer go, pressure <laughs> to go on a date with me. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, like going out for a night in the town with my friends is yeah. what I mean. Oh yeah, I I full on peer pressure my friends to go out. Come on, have another drink. Out. Take oh, another no. shot. <laughs> no, no, not that. Like, you know? no, don't go home and watch Netflix. Come out with me and yeah. have a good time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Eric. I'm going to have give you the honors of choosing the last question. Believe it. Believe it and you'll see it. Let's see. Oh, I think everyone has but me. Oh. Have you ever smoked oh. pot? Hot. Oh my god. Oh, oh my hey. god. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, how is it? <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's some good. Cali, but. All right, all right. I mean, we we are in California after all. <laughs> hey, but you said you haven't. You said everybody but you. Never really? in my life. Why? So, you want the real story or you kind of want the surface level story? No, the real story. 
Okay, so the real story is I grew up around men who were kingpins in the streets, right? They ran the neighborhood. They sold endless drugs. And so one at one point in my life, I think I was 14 or 15, my uncle literally had 800 pounds of marijuana in my grandmother's house. Oh, wow. Dang. Like he was full on drug dealing. He was the man. But he would smoke every day, all day. And I would get a headache. <laughs> but I think the real turning point for me not smoking is that two of my friends, close friends, I saw what we did to their life. And they were great basketball players. The moment they started smoking weed, they got lazy. They started looking, you know, just stingy, not clean. They just didn't show up the same. And I just saw something different in them. And it like kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And it was like, I've never, I will never smoke. But my thing, so I had a bet. 2010, senior year of college, I told my boys, if I go to Miami and I meet a hot girl, I'm going to smoke some weed, right? Really? You so, know, I feel like now everyone has such a negative <laughs> stigma. Yeah, now that is. Weed. I mean, yeah. it is legal now. I think I, it's your environment you grew up in. Because yes. the environment of Baltimore was very tough and challenging and it's very, it's just different. Yeah. So the influences around you can dictate where you go and how you feel. And granted, totally. it's not for everybody. Yeah. So this is how I know marijuana is not for me. Miami spring break. I was turning 22 and it was my birthday. I met a young lady from California. She had some butt. Went no. back. To, yeah, we went back to the <laughs> condo. Her friend and a friend from of mine. California. From California. Right. From California. Right. So I get in there, right? It's already rolled. <laughs> and I put it to my mouth. And I... And the blunt or whatever you want to call it, the doobie, it was just, it was wet, but it, there was no pull. I didn't know what I was doing. She yeah. was like, give me that. And after that, I was like, yeah, I'm not supposed to smoke weed. Oh, that's <laughs> I it? You yeah, attempted, because I, you I, didn't, attempted. I didn't know what, to, it, it didn't work. Like, it was oh. like. I thought you were going to give us like the most horrible trip of your life. No, story. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying like, I gave myself the opportunity to mm -hmm. say, listen, if this happens, this is what I'll do. And I attempted and it didn't work. So that's the yeah. sign of the universe. Like, you're not like, supposed to do you this. You were open-minded. I yeah, have to say you were open-minded. Open yeah. Um, so how about you, Diana? I know <laughs> after the intimidating. <laughs> well, it's not as intimidating. It's just real. Um, True. No, I love it. I feel like I grew up in a similar environment to that. Like, in South L.A., before weed was legal, like, yeah. weed was one of the drugs that people sold in the neighborhood. Um, and it was, like, completely associated to crime and gangs. Yeah. and. <laughs> Um, it's LA, so there's a lot of like, um, there was a lot of uh, drug association with like Mexico and like, especially in the community that I live in because it's like 99% immigrant Latino community. So there was a lot of crime associated with weed and other drugs. Um, having said that, <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting um, down to it. Everyone would smoke weed where I grew up. Like, everyone. It's just, you just do. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> even though like older folks have a really bad perception, especially in like the Mexican culture mm -hmm. of weed, it's literally like the worst thing ever. Um, people in high school, people in middle school, like weed was just out there. <clears throat> right. I tried it like in high school and very young, <laughs> but it's not for me. Like I like I tried it and I honestly just don't like it. But I'm not like against it or I'm not yeah, like I'm upset not at it. my friends who no. do it. Do um I did see a lot of people though, like it completely affected their life. Yeah. And they just became like zombies just from smoking yeah. weed every single day. And that was when we were really young, like in high school. So seeing that, I was and being like the nerd that I was, like I was like, Okay, I definitely don't want to be like that. I'll try it <laughs> and maybe smoke it sometimes but like yeah i it will i was be a like huge part of your life yeah exactly all right well man that was that got so heavy all right well guys on that note we are going to be taking a little bit of a break okay not a weed break but <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome plug but this is down today with kendall long we'll be right back is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals i know there are plenty of things i lie awake at night 
thinking about racking in my brain over and over again. And you don't want to go to people that are in your inner circle because you know you're going to have maybe a biased opinion. And if you want someone to give you unbiased opinion, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your licensed professional therapist. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. Guys, that's all around the world. You can log in your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. So literally, if you're feeling like you want to talk to your counselor, you can just go on your phone as opposed to waiting in a waiting room and trying to book an appointment. They're available right away. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. So no matter what your financial situation, BetterHelp is definitely an option for you. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today, right away. Visit betterhelp.com slash long. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash long, L-O-N. And join the over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with help of an experienced professional. Specialized offer for down-to-date listeners gets 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash long. All right, guys, we are back with Down to Date with Kendall Long. I have here Eric and Diana on their first date. Oh, so far, hey. so good. I think those fairs of square. Those questions were very, very intense. But now we're <laughs> going to go into something that's a little bit less intense. Game okay. time. Game time. Everyone loves game a little time. bit of a game. Woo. We're going to see your competitive time. nature because <gasps> we are going to be doing a debate. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I'm going to assign a topic and give each of you guys a viewpoint to debate on. Okay. So today's <clears throat> topic is, is cereal soup? Hey! Oh my God. I know. Is cereal That's soup? That's hard. Right. So, Diana, you're going to say that cereal is not soup. Okay. Eric, you're going to say cereal is soup. <laughs> On the clock, we have one minute. Eric, are you ready? Ready like Freddy and Betty. Let's go. <laughs> Your mark, get set, go. Cereal, it's soup. Why? Because you have a bowl and you have liquid, right? And you have chips and you have something in there, right? So, here's the thing you can have cold soup or you can have warm soup if you can put almond milk or milk or anything even water in your cereal you can warm it up or you can boil the water and put it or the milk and put it in the cereal i like fruity pebbles and i think fruity pebbles taste good cold or warm so with that Bold being statement. said anything that you put in a bowl that has liquid that has things like chips or cereal <laughs> It's considered soup. Other than that, what else would it be? Because you, you know, it's like you need, you can't have one without the other. Let's be clear here, right? So cereal is soup, people. Impressive. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to throw in the flag. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe in you, Dad. That was I believe in you. I believe that was in you. so good. <laughs> I was hoping I got <clears throat> that side of the debate. Really, that I would say that's the harder side of the debate. Really, yeah. you handled that very well, Eric. Yeah. It's all right, hard, well, Diana, you know, not all hope is lost. I still have okay. faith in you. You Thank have you. a minute on the clock to prove to me that cereal is not soup. Are you ready? Ready. Go. Cereal is not soup because um, soup. Basically, what soup is? Soup is a liquid, like you said, but that liquid is created with different ingredients from scratch. So um, chicken broth, um, olive oil, oils, I don't know, butter. <laughs> um, in order to make the liquid. The liquid is not from a cow or from an almond or an oat. It's, it's a liquid that you create and the ingredient list for a soup is extensive. Whereas for a cereal, it's just the type of cereal you have and, and milk, you know? A basic, basic liquid. Therefore, cereal is not a soup. All right, I think those are also some very strong points, Eric. Now you guys go back and forth, I wanna see. Well, clearly, uh, <laughs> you can warm anything up that's a liquid and make it a soup. Can you make so milk though, from scratch? Can you? I cannot, but I can find <laughs> a way to make milk from Can scratch. Can you describe the ingredient list of 
cow's milk? I cannot, but I will go on a box or a carton and I will see the ingredient list and I can create that. But I can warm milk up. I can also boil it and I can put it in my cereal oh, and therefore really it'll be soup, right? Because it's the psyche that believes it. If I tell my five-year-old nephew that that's soup and it's warmed up, he's going to believe it because okay, it's tired. warm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? After that's great, I will have to say, Eric, you've opened my eyes to soup. Yeah. You have. I'm going to have make, to say, I'm going to have to crown, you. I'm gonna have to crown yeah. you the winner. Diana, oh, I'm God. sorry, but... <clears throat> No, I, it, that was good. That was a good delivery. I try. Yeah. <laughs> I came in. I came in on the idea that cereal wasn't soup, and I yeah. feel like I have a whole new viewpoint. I think I even believe it now. Like, yeah, <laughs> gonna go home, warm Fruity up some pebbles, milk, warm up the almond milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to be getting a little bit in depth with some questions. In front of you guys, you see flashcards. Yeah. Each of you has a stack of flashcards in front of you with a few questions. You are both going to alternate asking each other a question, which both of you guys will answer. Okay. So you read each other the question. And during this point, I'm not here. You guys are going to be going back and forth, bantering between this. And uh, yeah, so you should go first, Dan. I yeah, first. ladies Can first. Can I go first? Of yes. course. Okay. When was the last time you told a lie and what was it? Mm, I don't lie a lot. And I can't say I don't lie because I'm not going to tell my grandmother everything she wants to know. Um. Do you have one in mind, Dan? Do you want to go first? I, then we can... Yeah, okay, I'll go first. Okay. Yeah, I don't. And we'll switch I over feel to like you and you there's this thing that we say in my family. Like, if you can't think of what you thought you were going to say, it means you were going to say a lie. Yeah. Ooh, okay. okay. All right. Call it him out. Yeah. Um, I'll go first. Okay. This is bad if my friend sees this. But <laughs> um, one of my friends is staying at my place over the weekend. And I said, what time are you getting here? Because I might go crash at a friend's house because I didn't want to go out that night. Because that's the plan for the weekend. Yeah. And that was kind of like my way of like getting out of oh, like okay. not going out. That's fair. We can uh, skip this question. If yeah, because I don't really know. Like, I don't, like, I I'm don't not, lie. I'm not, no, what it's like, because what, like, I'm going to be open. I'm going to be, I think yeah. sometimes for me, I could be too open and too blunt. It's fair. So, All yeah. Right. So I got to ask. Next question. Go for <clears> it. <throat> oh, wow. <laughs> if there was a sudden zombie apocalypse at this very moment what would your plan be oh god i, would, I don't even understand that that's a hard one yeah. that's an intense one <clears throat> i don't think i've ever even thought what of even consider that? that i've considered like if there was an earthquake you know like i've thought so of that scenario me, what is the zombie apocalypse um, i don't even know i guess like I, i'm thinking about <clears throat> like that movie um or like the walking dead I'm assuming oh, so. that's if that <laughs> happens right now, like yeah. Kendall all of a sudden is a zombie. You know what? <laughs> what would be the plan? I would like. I would run. I would ask them their car. sign. What's your astrology? You know, I would make them laugh. What's your like, sign? What up, bro? Hey, what's going on? A zombie? On? You, here's the thing. So when it comes to scary movies, and I'm not afraid of scary movies. Like I'm not like, oh my God, like I laugh at them. So I would be curious to be like, oh yeah, what's up, buddy? What's what do you want? Now, if it was attacking me, I would be fighting back, of course, but I would do the opposite. It's kind of like if you have a bully, right, trying to bully you, and you bully them back, it's gonna throw them off because they're <laughs> usually the bully. But if you fight fire with fire, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be more fire. So if you give the energy the same thing, the energy that's coming towards you, I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know. Have you ever you. been in a situation <clears throat> where you're in danger? Because it sounds like you haven't. In danger in what way? Like your life feels threatened? Because uh, I don't think that's how you would actually act. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, I was a bouncer at a club, you know, times where I was afraid and like, but nothing really went down. I was still like there. Um, I mean, I grew up in Baltimore City. <laughs> so I think I grew up in a little bit of trauma, you know, like <laughs> everything is tense. So I don't know. I have a very... Um, deep intuition so I can kind of feel things out and kind of know that I don't like I can go into a place and like I don't need to be here me too I feel like my discernment is like my yeah. intuition is insane I'm curious what you would do if there's a zombie apocalypse right now I would right literally now. go into my intuition and like go into like fight or flight mode in yeah. a very relaxed way and just like run away Diana yeah. I'm surprised that you'd be relaxed during a zombie apocalypse I mean not relaxed but like I would be strategic you yeah. know I think that you shouldn't panic in situations. Yeah, there, there are certain situations that if you <clears throat> panic, you're gonna just 
end up dead. Like you need to get yeah. it together. I would more question it. Like, is this real? Like, is this happening? Next question, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> what do you not regret that you probably should? That's a really hard one because I feel like I, I don't do things that would mm. require regret or like would make me regret something that I do. Um, I guess maybe, I don't know, doing something better, like being yeah. like, I don't know, focusing more in school and college, I guess, yeah. that I That's don't fair. regret. Like in college, I was very on top of my things, but like I never cared about my grades. I didn't have bad grades, but like I was oh, yeah. very like... Like, just like, hey, I'm just trying to, like, get my diploma and dip, you know? Oh, okay. Um, you had to focus. Yeah, but I was, yeah, but I was, like, on, like, with my goals, I was, like, on it. But maybe if I, like, focused more and appreciated my time in college a little bit more, uh -huh. maybe, like, <clears throat> things would have turned out a different way. Yeah. But I don't regret it. I feel like these questions definitely bring out a lot of things that we didn't know. That being said, Eric, would you mind stepping out? Diana and I have a little one-on-one uh, -on -one oh. talking that we need to do. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> All right, guys, so it's time for honesty time, and this is the time where we separate both Eric and Diana and figure out, are you guys really down to date? So first impression of Eric right now, how do you feel? Um, He's tall. <laughs> he walks in, I'm like, okay, he's really tall. Um, he's great looking. Um, he has high energy, a smile on his face. Um, he's laughing. All great. And we go on the things you'd never bring up on a first date jar, and... We get to the topic of weed. So right now, Eric seems to have a really strong opinion about marijuana and not doing marijuana. How does that make you feel? Yeah, so I'm thinking he's sort of reserved. And I'm thinking, okay, he seems like he has a similar background in terms of like where he comes from to me, but he, he falls in a different place than I did um, growing up. Um, he's very reserved. He seems like a good boy. Um, very smart based on like what he's saying about um, his family and his experience with pot and drugs. Um, so at first I feel like he might be conservative in that way. Are you into guys that are conservative and like quote unquote the good guy? I don't think so. <laughs> so Fair. at first initially I'm thinking, oh, he seems very like, like, just in the box, very, like, perfect, you know? Um, and so I'm not really into that. But then he gets around to sharing how he was open-minded and is willing to, like, try things for the first time, et cetera. Um, and I could totally relate to the part of, like, pot is just not for me. So now we're talking about cereal and if cereal is soup. I have to say, I was thoroughly impressed by this. Yes. I was like, wow. Okay, so in the moment when he's talking about cereal as a soup... I'm just thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to win this debate. Like, there's no reason, there's no argument that I could come up with that could really overshadow and, like, just completely throw his argument off. And his delivery is just great. He just keeps going and he makes sure he hits, like, the last second of the minute. Yeah, Eric is a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, he took that debate and I feel like he... Like, he had it prepared ahead of time. Like, he was ready. Very, very passionate about the soup cereal debate. Yeah, I'm thinking, does he did, does he have this prepared? <laughs> you know? Do you feel like... I feel like Eric is so positive, but he didn't really say a lot of negative things about himself. Do you feel yeah. like maybe he's maybe just not as open? I agree with that. I think maybe... I'm thinking maybe that he wants to paint a good picture of himself, which I could totally relate to. It's um, a first date. I mean, we all want to show the, put our best foot forward. Yeah, and you want to make a good impression. And I think that when you're trying to make the first impression, you always want to um, portray yourself as what you think your best version is. And then we were also talking about the white lie. And he couldn't think of a white lie. Everybody white lies. I white Everyone. lie. Guys, I white lie. I think I white lied about my white lie. <laughs> That's great. You like completely spun the question on its head. Lying about the white lie. <laughs> yeah. Throughout the experience of, you know, talking to Eric, getting to know him a little bit more, anything stand out as a red flag? I would say the part that we talked about regarding him wanting to give his 
best version of himself. And so that maybe could make me think that maybe he's a little bit closed off when it comes to opening up about like what he truly feels or things or who he is. And on the op- opposite side of the coin, um, what do you like about Eric? That he's funny and his energy is really high and he's entertaining. So um, I feel like he's not a boring person. Completely. Eric is not boring. That's yeah. what I love about Eric. All right. Well, thank you so much. We are going to be getting Eric in here to get his viewpoint. So. Honesty time. The story in one minute section. Um, basketball. You guys both have basketball yeah. in common. It seems like um, you have a lot in common with your past. Yeah, we do. Basketball. Yeah. She has three sisters. I have three sisters. Uh one brother, one brother. <laughs> you also talked about your astrological signs. So what yeah. is it about her sign and your sign that match so well? Well. She said that she was a. Aquarius. Aquarius. So they are air signs. So air signs usually think a lot. So they're in the clouds always thinking. Um, I'm a Pisces. I'm more of a water sign. So I'm more emotional and sensitive. I can feel things out. But I also like to think a lot as well. So I think the conversations, usually what I know from you know, Aquarius women is that we can talk about anything and it won't even feel like, I don't feel like it, I feel like I can tell you anything. With so you no, feel like she's someone no that you can like really open up to and yeah, have like that and we, and we can have like a back and forth and it'd be balanced and it'd be understanding and, and it can be some challenges in there as well, but for the good, good, a good reason. And so now we're talking about the jar of forbidden questions. Yeah. I have to say the weed topic was something that was, it's hard to talk about, but you guys handled it so well. Yeah. Yeah. So what were your thoughts on that topic? Uh, I mean, I think it was pretty, you know, fair. I mean, everybody smokes, but myself, I I kind of think she was a little bit uh, maybe holding back once she figured out that I didn't smoke, that maybe she shouldn't say, but that's why I came back like when I went to college and all the girls that I was into were smoking. It doesn't matter. So um, I think it was, I don't think marijuana, it's like, now if it was like cocaine, <laughs> then that'd be, yeah. more, that'd be a little bit more different. But, but do you feel like you and Diana have like a similarity with the same backgrounds like growing yeah, up? Yeah, I think there's some comparisons. There's some similarities. There's some, yeah, I feel like there, we got some things in common for sure. And so then we got into the in-depth questions. Yeah. And um, at one point I wrote down, <clears throat> she called you out because you said that you wouldn't be afraid when a zombie apocalypse happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did. I like that. I, yeah, check me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's right? have She's a challenge you. Diana, yeah, Diana check challenges me you. now, Diana. Uh, yeah. Um, I think she said, I don't really think you've ever been in a tight situation. And I was like, maybe not. Or maybe tight situations were always around me. So I knew how to deal with it from afar without thinking about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, that was a good call out. But in my mind, when I think about a zombie, I'm like, okay. No big deal. It's just a zombie. Yeah, because I'm more of a, I want to protect. So, I mean, I, if she's with me, I'm not going to just run like, oh, Diana, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, I got to be able to hold my own, at least say or do something. So True, you got to be the hero. Be the hero I, of your own got, story. Yes, there you go. So now that you've gone <laughs> through this experience, um, how do you feel about Diana now? I think she's solid. I think she's a great person. I would love to know her more and see what she is about. I mean, it's she's fair. I, I like her. Yeah, and in someone that you're dating, what, what do you look for in someone that you are looking for in a partner right now? Uh, just energy. Energy, intellect, um, curiosity, um, substance. Uh, someone who knows themselves and not afraid to stand up for what they believe in. And someone who's going to challenge me. So, Are there any like red flags that you saw with Diana? No, not really. Not that I can point out. No. Yeah. I mean, she seems like a all around. Yeah. She, she could be a great catch. Well, are there yeah. any deal breakers for you when it comes to dating somebody? Uh, honesty, you know, speak your truth, speak on how you feel. Hygiene is big. Hygiene. <laughs> uh, got to brush the teeth, teeth, showers, body very odor, important. all that. Um, those are my top two. Like just speaking the truth and being open and honest and hygiene. Mm, those are the deal breakers. But you yeah. only know until you know. No, no smelly dates. She didn't smell from where I was. I think she, Diana <laughs> smelled really good. So, <laughs> all right. Now that we've had a chance to talk about your feelings, we're gonna bring Diana in, and we're going to 
get to honesty. Let's do it. All right, so we have Eric and Diana back, and this is the moment of truth, <laughs> honesty time. You guys each have a it's card. Confession. On each side, is this down or not? You're going to show it and bring it up on the count of three to see if you're down to go on another date. So you guys ready? Oh, God. Ready. Ready. ready? Like One, spaghetti. two, three, reveal. <sighs> we have What you got, pork down. chop? <laughs> we have both down. She's down, not today? No, down to date. Like, oh, if you're down okay, to that's date. that's right. Down to date. All right. So. It's going down <laughs> oh in the DM. I mean, down to date. All right. So why did you choose down, Diana? Because he's funny and cool and he knows about Mercury and retrograde. Hey. All about the astrological signs right here. Yes. Eric, why did you choose your down to date? Simple. Converse, conversation rules the nation. I feel oh. like she can speak. She can have some conversation. We he can, can converse. Debate. 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 Back and forth. Serial Kanye. It's going down, 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 <laughs> down, down, down to date. Down, down to date. DTD. This down to date. Down, 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 down. This is like my new, this is like yeah. my new song, oh, guys. Did it. Kendall Long. We did it. We down. That's going to play at like the Nino start Brown. of the, <laughs> and at the end of the podcast <laughs> every time. Yeah. All right, guys, this has been Down to Date with Kendall Long. We just saw a date with Eric and Diana, and they both decided that they wanted to go on a second date. They hit it off. So we're really excited about that. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe, and follow us. You can also follow us on Instagram at Down to Date Podcast. We'll see you guys next time.